How many times a day do you check your phone to see if you have a message, a missed call, an email, or an upcoming appointment? Five, 10, 20 times? Probably more than that if you counted. Whether such an act is necessary or just force of habit, have you considered how it affects your phone's battery life? The evolution of wearable technology has begun to reduce the reliance on checking the phone itself, but for many, a smartwatch is not the solution. The Amazon Kindle has been extremely popular for a number of reasons, but one reason is the length of time it can go between charges. What allows this? If you have seen or used one, you will know that it is the screen technology. Russian firm Yota Devices have recognised this and about 18 months ago released the Yota Phone, the world's first dual screen smartphone with an always on display. Using a rear mounted electronic paper display, EPD, many of the activities you would normally complete on the front screen can be done with the EPD. They now return with the Yota Phone 2, a device more worthy of being compared to the current crop of leading smartphones. On first glance, when looking at the handset, it would be quite easy to mistake it for one of the older Nexus devices, the Google Nexus S. There is a real curvature to the device. It looks appealing and feels smooth, yet solid in the hand. I should point out that there is no notification light or physical camera shutter button. There are two displays on this device, and this is what makes the Yota Phone 2 so special. Let's start with the main display, a 5-inch Full HD display with a resolution of 1920x1080 and a PPI of 442. I cannot really fault it. No significant reflections, crisp and clear with good viewing angles. No, it's not Quad HD, but do we really need it? Corning Gorilla Glass 3 can be found on the front and rear display, so should it come into contact with objects that could leave a mark on the screen, it will be protected. On the back is a 4.7-inch EPD with a 960 by 540 resolution and 235 ppi. If you're not familiar with EPD displays, they are designed to reflect the light rather than emit light and therefore act more like traditional paper and ink. The display essentially holds an image without using power, in turn meaning better battery life. Due to the EPD technology, you do get at times what I will refer to as ghosting, whereby the image on screen shows traces of previous images on screen, thus affecting the current view. The EPD cannot be read in low or no light, as it requires the light to reflect. Therefore, late night reading will require you to be near a light source. Android is Google's operating system for mobile devices and has developed rapidly over the last few years into a very powerful platform and perhaps arguably the most versatile. Installed on the Yota Phone 2, anything from emails, phone calls, text messages and street level navigation is supported, meaning you can remain connected, online and functional at all times. Popular Google services such as Gmail, Google+, Hangouts, Maps, Music, YouTube and more are all available too. Personalised wallpapers, ad widgets, change the screen's brightness, font size, security options, data monitor and more, it's all present. Of course, there is too the Google Play App Store for the much talked about and demanded apps to further enhance capability. Yota have left the device with virtually stock Android, meaning there's little in the way of value added extras. Yota Cover is a layer of privacy over your personal space. Almost like a lock screen, there is a default notification screen which allows you to get quick access to a dialer, call log, SMS, email and reminders. Or alternatively, you can choose cover images from Facebook, Instagram, your photos or Yotacast. Yota Panel is a set of screens which displays the information you are interested in. You can have up to four of these, choose from pre-configured options such as those that show a calendar or those that show speed dials and battery power to an array of grids which you can then personalise. Yota Apps is a number of apps that are engineered to be used on the rear display only. The Yota Phone 2 is packed with connectivity features, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, including 5GHz, GPS, GLONASS, NFC, micro USB, 3.5mm headphone jack, 3 and 4G. Wireless charging is also present. The Yota Phone does too have USB host functionality. Another great feature is the fact that it supports SlimPort, 
output your phone's display to a larger HD display with a special adapter, ideal for presentations or sharing photos and video. I have been very surprised by the quality of the audio on the Yota phone. It is just such a shame that the stereo speakers are on the bottom edge of the handset. Whilst not particularly loud, the sound is really clear and actually quite pleasurable to listen to. Rated at 8 megapixels and with an LED flash, the camera in my opinion lets the device down. Using the default camera application, there is scope to tweak the settings and have a little fun. But there is a limit, and there is considerably less control than those camera apps found on Sony's, Samsung's and Nokia's. Get the right light, the right focus and take time framing the shot, and the results will be reasonably good. Capture the image in a rush, because you have to, and I think it's fair to say the resulting image will not tell the whole story. Images are often washed out and lack vibrancy and colour depth. Shooting in the autumn should have resulted in punchy images with browns, reds and oranges, but instead they're all a bit dull and lacking in focus and sharpness. The good news is that there is quite a suite of editing facilities included on the phone, so you can take time to make those images a bit more rewarding. Future software updates may assist in resolving some of the camera issues. So, to the all-important second screen. There are two ways of looking at this screen in my eyes. The first, and likely most popular, is a pure key task functionality. What I mean by this is that you look at the screen for your notifications, for email, text messages, calls and more. You reply to a few here too, but the vast majority of the more intensive and possibly media heavy content is dealt with by the main AMOLED display. You then have the second way, the battery saver mode. This is in the interest of exploiting the battery for all it's worth. You do as much as you can from the rear screen. Of course, how you use it will be up to you. If you went with the first option, you'll be utilising the Yota panels most of the time, which can do all that you need them to, and most certainly work. A nifty feature Yota have included is that when you press the power button to unlock the screen, it can work out whether you're looking at the front or rear screen. Thus, if the EPD is facing you, it unlocks this and leaves the AMOLED off. Or, if you look at the AMOLED, then this will power on and the EPD remain locked. As the EPD is always on, you do not have to press the power button, you can just swipe up to unlock if you prefer and get taken straight to Yota panels. Probably the best feature is the fact that any screen you view on the AMOLED, you can flick it or mirror it on the EPD. At any screen, when viewing from the AMOLED, press and hold the home key and slide your finger to the left icon, Yota mirror. Turn the device over and the screen is displayed on the EPD. Use the EPD as if you would the AMOLED. It is when running Android through the EPD that the ghosting is most noticeable, but you can live with it for the benefit it brings. Some text can be hard to read, but if you're familiar with icons in Android, you will soon know what you are doing. It is by using Yota Mirror and interacting with Android through the EPD that you can achieve my second approach, which is maximum battery saving. Most smartphones need charging every day if you want to get through the next working day without needing to top up the battery. However, the Yota Phone 2 is a little different. I initially got 1.5 days under normal usage without the EPD really being used. Two days life is most certainly achievable from the 2500 mAh battery with more reliance on the second screen. You can choose at what percentage or turn it off completely, but the default is 5%, that the device will switch to Yota Energy Mode, which will automatically switch to the rear screen and enhance the life of your phone. However, spend more time using the EPD display as the primary screen and it's possible to get three or even four days from it. The Yota Phone 2 is an interesting product. The dual screen technology will appeal to the technology conscious that just want to try it out, but like me, you will actually find that after a time, there is a real desire and compulsion to use that second screen. But when we have asked for high quality screens and HD media, it seems silly to now be requesting and desiring a lower resolution black and white display to allow us to achieve better battery life. All said, the Yota phone stands out because of that second screen. But ignoring this for just a moment, the Yota phone 2 is actually a solid device that competes with some of the best of them out there. Yota devices are not the best known brand, better known in Russia and Eastern Europe, but do not write them off because of this. 
There may be cheaper or better value handsets on the market, but are they really meeting your needs? If you're looking for something a bit different and like the idea of one to two days extra battery life, the Yota Phone 2 is a worthy consideration.